Hey, I'm Bob and I like to make stuff. Today we're gonna make a lamp out of resin and wood. For quite a while now, I've wanted to make a new lamp to put on my bedside table. But one of the things about me is that I tend to make things that are practical and functional and worry about how they look or just the artistic value of something last. So the purpose of this entire lamp is just to put out light. That's the easy part. What I wanna work on is trying to make the rest of the lamp something that is purely just interesting to look at. And I've got a plan, so let's see if it'll work. We've got a simple lamp here, basically just a shade at the top with the light in it, and then a wire that's gonna run down through the body of the lamp. So one necessary thing is to put a pipe down the very center of it. We're gonna take advantage of this center pipe and actually use it as the middle of a spiral staircase. I think I'm gonna make the body of the lamp out of a big block of resin, and inside that resin, I'm gonna put this pipe, but then also take some pieces of wood and stagger them around so that when you look at it from the side, it looks like they spiral up and around. And then when the light comes down through the clear resin, it should shine on the top of each one of those stairs, but also create a shadow underneath it. Like I said, this is only because I wanna to try to come up with something that's just purely interesting to look at. Let's give it a shot and see if we can make it happen. The light part of this lamp is the simple part, and I'll show you that in just a second. But I also wanted to explain these. I'm gonna use these pieces of pipe, and these came with a ceiling light that we got a long time ago. It was made to hang in a really tall ceiling, but we have a short ceiling. These extra pieces came with it, and I held onto them because they have a female thread on the top and a male on the bottom so that you can stack them up. The reason I'm pointing that out is because often light fixtures will come with extra material like this that you can hang onto and use later. These are pipes, they're hollow, so eventually I'll screw them together, cut them off to the right length, and then this wire from a wire kit will go up through them. The wire kit has everything you need. It's got the wire with the plug on the end, it's got this really simple fixture, the wires just get screwed into these terminals, the light bulb goes in there, and you've got a light. It also comes with mounting hardware so that you can mount that in there. This piece up here holds the shade. It's everything you need for just a few dollars. The first step here is to figure out the diameter of this pipe, and then I'm gonna make a template for each one of the little stairs that's gonna be mounted on this and will rotate up around it. So I'm gonna use some calipers to find out this size, then I can figure out which drill bit I need to drill the hole to go around them. It's basically just about a half of an inch, so I'll go the next size up, and then when I glue those pieces on, I can fill any extra gap with some epoxy. We started working on the template, and this is gonna represent each one of the stairs that's gonna go around this pole. We've got a center hole marked here, and we'll drill that out. That's gonna be the center of this pole. And we've also got angles cut on the sides, all the measurements we need, but eventually, we're just gonna trace this onto a piece of walnut, cut it down into sections, and then on each one of those sections, we'll add the miters, drill the hole, and then take it to the bandsaw and resaw it down into individual slivers that are this thick. I tried to get really close to the line, but that saw blade just leaves a rough edge. So we're gonna take these to the sander and sand right up to that line on each side to get it nice and smooth. I was planning on drilling the holes in this, but unfortunately this outside diameter is kind of in between sizes. And so I ordered a different drill bit that's gonna be the right one that should show up later on today. So we're gonna wait on these. In the meantime, we're gonna start working on the form to put this entire thing in. So I've got this piece of sewer pipe. This is six inches in diameter, which is about what we're gonna want for the base of the lamp. So I need to figure out a way to get my metal piece centered in this and make this so that it can be poured and then put on the lathe. To do that, we're gonna cut out a plug it goes inside this pipe, so it's gonna fit in there. And then on the underside of that plug, we're also gonna make a little tenon that can fit into the chuck jaws on the lathe. I'm trying to plan ahead to make sure that we can turn it the way we want, everything's mounted inside of it, because once we pour that epoxy, we can't go back. 
To get this on the lathe so we can turn it down to a circle, I need to put this faceplate on here, but that means I need to find the center of it and then knock off the edges so there's less to turn. So the first step here is gonna be to find the center. We have a bits video about finding the center of different shapes if you want, but on a square, it's super easy. You just make diagonals from the corners and where they intersect is the center point. I cut this pipe down to what I think is going to be its final length, and that's mainly so that I can hold it up here, and as I turn down this plug, I can make sure that it's going to fit on the inside. I got this thing turned down to the right size so that it acts as a plug and goes in the pipe, but we also have a little hole made by this spike right in the center of the piece. Now that's gonna work out really well because I can drill that out to the right size to put my pipe down in. That way the pipe will be embedded in the mold held at the bottom when I pour the epoxy. I'll just keep this thing handy because once we get it poured and take it out of the mold, we'll just put that stock back on here and mount it back on the lathe. Now this is the hole that we'll get to drill out for the big post later on. Over the weekend, I got in this drill bit, which is a very specific size to match the rod that we have. So now we can go ahead and drill the hole in the center of this plate and in each one of these wedges. I think we've got all of our different pieces ready now, so we're gonna start assembling this and hopefully put it in the form and start pouring some epoxy. The first thing is to put this post in here, but I noticed once I stuck it in there that it actually isn't perpendicular to this base. That would mean that the entire lamp would be skewed. So we have to make sure that this is square to the base, which means I'm probably gonna to have to use some super glue or something to hold it in that position before we start putting anything else on. The good thing is, if I use glue around this bottom, it should also seal up that a little bit so the epoxy won't leak down through that hole. What we've got here is all of the steps that are gonna drop down over this. Then we made a little spacer. Now this spacer has a ledge on one side, so this can sit right up against this outside edge and then that tells us where the next one goes. So we'll drop the next one down on top of it and it'll just line up with the outside. We're gonna use a little bit of glue on these to hold them in place. Eventually the epoxy will just sandwich everything together but I think some glue and some activator will hold them while we get the whole thing built. The pipe's gonna fit down over this little flange that I made, so I'm gonna put on some caulking along this edge to kind of seal it up to make sure the epoxy doesn't pop out the bottom. I wanna to try to figure out a way to get this separated from the epoxy once it cures up. So I'm gonna put some mold release on the inside. Hopefully we can get this to peel off. Otherwise, we'll just have to put the whole thing on the lathe and turn this off. Now it's time for the big epoxy pour. Now I've done this before, but I haven't done it this much at one time. We're gonna be pouring about five and a half inches tall of this entire diameter. It's a lot of epoxy and probably a little bit more than what this thick set is supposed to be used for. We're gonna try it anyway. We're gonna mix it up, pour it in here, and then swirl it around to try to get all the air bubbles from underneath the steps to come up to the sides. Then we're gonna put this entire thing in a pressure pot.
The purpose of the pressure pot is to make all of the air bubbles on the inside of the pot smaller. It's pressurizing them, squeezing them down. Hopefully they'll be small enough that you can't really see them once the epoxy sets up. This thing is finally out of the pressure pot and it's actually really heavy. I ended up doing three separate pours, so there are three different layers. Hopefully you won't be able to see too much of a difference between those pours, but actually looking down in here I can already see some tiny bubbles in between the last two. Unfortunately there's just going to be some bubbles in this and we're just going to have to go with it. Now the next step is to get it out of this mold. I'm going to try the bandsaw and see if I can score this piece of pipe and crack it off so that I don't have to turn off the entire thing on the lathe. We've got the mold off and so far it looks terrible. Um, there's something happened on the middle pour and there were some voids on the side and then the epoxy from the top pour kind of went around them. So there's this really gooey layer on the outside of it. Luckily it's just on the outside and is not the entire center. There's a bunch of air bubbles. The whole thing doesn't really look as clear as I expected. But luckily we still have to let it cure, put it on the lathe and then turn off the outside of it. So we should be able to get it down to a cylinder, get rid of all the stuff that's on the outside, clean up the top and hopefully it will end up looking better than it does right now. After a whole lot of turning, I finally got this thing down to basically a cylinder. It's pretty close. I had to turn off a lot more than I expected because there was a big chip in the middle and I had to get down past that. So it's a little bit smaller on the outside than I wanted, but it's in pretty good shape. Now it's really cloudy, and so we're going to cover it with a couple of coats of gloss varnish. We're just going to paint this on the outside while it's turning really slowly so there's no drips. While I'm waiting on the varnish to dry, I'm going to move on to these pieces. I don't really like this shiny brass gold thing, so we're going to go ahead and spray paint these with a matte black. It's going to be covered up by a shade so you won't really see it anyway, but it will just cover up this nasty color. Here's where we're at. I spent a lot of time sanding this thing, trying to get it flat. I used micro mesh, which are really high grit, the foam pads with some water, trying to get it nice and smooth. It got to a point, but basically it's not really worth going any farther. I'm going to go ahead and finish this, but I am pretty disappointed. Here's why. I knew that there would be some bubbles underneath these steps, and that's okay. That's not a huge deal. The thing that I'm really disappointed about is the coloration on the inside of the epoxy, and this is not the epoxy's fault. Basically what I think happened was that the walnut oil seeped out of the pieces of walnut into the epoxy as it was curing. There is a way around this, I just didn't take the time to do it. The thing to do would be to stabilize the pieces of wood, and that's where you impregnate them with a resin or an oil to stop any air bubbles on the inside of them from leaking out and also stop any of the oils that are inside the wood from penetrating the area around. You could stabilize those pieces, but it is kind of a long process and you need some special equipment. You could also just coat them in a clear coat to kind of seal up the outside. That's probably what I should have done. It would have been a lot faster and would have saved me some headache. But it is what it is. This is where I'm at now, so I'm going to keep moving. This lamp kit is made to thread down into another piece of pipe and it's not the right size for this. It's really close though, so I think what I'm going to do is file off these threads to make it a little bit smaller, fit it down in there and use some 5 minute epoxy to lock it into place.
We've got this glued on. Now, before we can put the wire up through here, there's gotta be a place for the wire to come out of at the bottom. So I've gotta cut some sort of a channel here that lines up with that center post, and that way I can feed the wire through. So here it is, the finished lamp. Now this was basically about making the base. Doing the lamp work and all that stuff is really simple and you could add that to any sort of a creative base that you wanna come up with. The big thing I learned on this project was that no matter what kind of wood you're using, there's always a chance that the oil could leak out of it into the epoxy, even though that's never happened to me before. So in the future, I'm always gonna coat or stabilize the wood before I put it into the epoxy. This was a really cool experiment and I learned a whole lot of stuff from it. If you learned some stuff, I would love to hear about it as well down in the comments. We've got tons of other types of projects that you may want to check out, so be sure to look at those videos, and if you're not subscribed, please do that as well. That's it for this one. Thanks for watching. See you next time. I tried to get really close to the line on these, but that saw blade is going to leave a little... little... <laughs> Quite on set, cat. But the good thing here is if I put... I don't keep wanting to say soap. Down on top of it, and it'll go right there. It, it, it could go right there. Hey, I'm Bob, and I like to... Man. I like, I like to make that. I like to make that.